What's up guys, Woody here, back with another Mythgard video, and today we are checking out, hands down, my favourite uh, deck combination colour at the moment, and that is Mono Green. I'm loving, loving myself some Mono Green. I've been loving it for about the last, about the last week really, I've been dabbling with it, but it's only the last couple of days I've really dived in and started p tweaking stuff around myself, and um, the, the colour is so versatile, as, was, as is any colour in, in Mythgard. Uh, maybe I like it because you have the, like a, some real big creatures you can get out mid to late game. Um, and that's kind of how I play. When I played Magic the Gathering on Paper Magic, I, I like playing getting these big units to trample out. Similar here, I get some big units out of the overrun and smash people in the face. And I'm enjoying doing that. But it is a very versatile deck. Now, we're going to start change the way I'm going to do these deck videos. Especially for now. Not every deck video will be like this. And I will say when it's going to be an expensive deck. But... Especially for now, when everyone's collection is a little bit narrow, a little bit smaller, I'm going to be basically doing two decks in this video, and two types of gameplay. So we have a budget deck, which is super cheap, like five and a half thousand essence, hasn't got a single mythic in, in in the deck, and it's a mono green deck that I've I've tested, I've tried, I've tested. Um, this one here, slightly says no record because I did change a couple of cards in it, uh, and I made a new one. But anyway, um, I have tried and tested this deck, and um, and it, it's going to then. I'll then go into a gameplay with that, but the gameplay with the budget one will only be against AI, purely because I don't want to lose rank points playing a deck that isn't necessarily very strong in gold ladder. So hopefully people can, people can understand that. So yeah, we're going to jump into this, and then we'll jump into the more optimised deck, the one that does have mythics, it does have big guys in there, it does have expensive cards in there, it's probably about double the price. But then looking at that list, you'll be able to get an idea of, all. Oh, this card next, then this card next, and this card next, okay? Um, so let's jump straight into some budget green, um, budget mono green. Now, the idea around this budget version, uh, or around the version I'm enjoying playing, is it's like mid-range ramp. And if you don't know what ramp is, if you're a new player, ramp basically means you're playing ahead of the curve, ideally. Meaning, what I mean by ahead of the curve is, on turn four, I can play five mana creatures. Now, the way I can do that is with the best, or one of the best cards in the deck. Now, this card is a must-craft. If you want to play mono green, you have to have to craft this craft this card grinning cobbler okay it's swift comes out of one uh power on them it has something to sickness but then on the next turn you can move it and then swing it so you can move it and then swing it. i can move it across swing it making it die turn two isn't the end of the world it means turn three you have four mana you have three gems uh in your bar but you have four mana i can get all sorts out on turn three meaning by turn five i can potentially get six drop cards out okay and we're going to go into that in a minute what's in this deck this card here the grinning grinning couple of guys is a must craft anyone wants to play mono green this is your card okay i'm going to quickly switch wait there Boom, camera two uh so you guys can see the mana curve okay now you can see it's it's like it has lots of um ones and two drops and it slowly creeps down to, to six six plus drops now i am this is like i said this, the reason this mana curve is like this if you compare it to the other one we look at later is this is cheap now, key cards you must craft in this deck before I go... We'll, we'll, we'll go for all the cards first. Three Grin and Cobble Locks, two Overkill, two Rewind Hex. I'll go on there, why they're in there in a minute. Uh, two Born Again, very important card in this deck. Three Detained, four Gallows Boy, three Raid the Tombs, two Led Astray, two Leshy Green, two Sky Rangers, two uh, Volkov Pointman, three Avenging Alphas, three Gamians, very important cards. Uh, two Ravenous She, two Volkov Heavies, and two Vil uh, Vilja Wind Furies, okay? Now, this deck is... The ramp in this deck isn't huge in terms of we're not getting out massive, massive units because the big units in green are expensive. They're Mythic cards or they're Rare cards, okay? And if we look at the price of this deck, this deck costs 5,550 Essence. It's super cheap, super, super cheap, okay? But I have had success with it. Now, the idea is we're looking at getting Grinning Cobblocks out and getting them killed early on. So we can buy... By turn five... When they're dropping their mid game, mid game, mid mid game cards, get my words out. We're dropping stuff like Wind Fury, Vilja Wind Fury, Swift Frenzy Blast Two. I mean, I can move it. I can swing two um, two two lanes away from the enemy to hit face and do two blast damage. But it has Frenzy, so it ends up getting four blast damage on one turn with a clean sweep, and it will do eight damage to the face. It's 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 a crazy good card. A crazy crazy good card. Okay, Volk of Heavy is a very good, like, for the budget deck, 
kind of end game pushing card, okay? It has overrun and it has armor. You drop this down in front of someone on turn four, remember, you get the right you get the right draw, you get a cob lock. You can drop this guy on turn four. Super, super powerful. And Ravenous She is our other five drop card. Uh, against aggro decks, very good. You drop them opposite a pup. The pup dies before it can attack. The pup, they don't get the life steal. The pup dies because it has to take two damage first before they can get the attack. Really good also against rush minions as well. But that's the cheap, the, 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 the cheap version, okay? Now the key cards, like I said, Coblock is your first craft. If you haven't got Coblock, craft this card now. This will be in almost any mono green deck you play. It will be in any ramp deck you play, guaranteed. Born again, this card, if you know what it does, returns to your hand from the boneyard at the end of your turn. It's nuts. It just keeps bouncing back, keeps bouncing back, keeps bouncing back. If you need that one bit of mana and you're all of a sudden like, oh, okay, I need to burn a card to get my um, my, my Sky Ranger up, then, then I can drop that down there, okay? So Wind Fury up, then I can, I can burn it. It comes back, or I can play it knowing that it's a blocker and it'll come back to my hand another turn. It's such a good card, okay? Now, Leshy Green can be changed. If you don't own Leshy Green as a rare, I wouldn't say you have to go out and craft them. They are pretty good. Where you could swap them for, if you don't own Leshy Green, but you do own um, Alchemist, oh sorry, Analyst, then I would recommend putting these guys in instead. It's up to you what you want to do, okay? Leshy Green, if you don't know what they do, Leshy Green comes down for basically 1-1 one, one for every minion on the board, including this. So they've got four minions out, you've got two minions out, including Leshy Green at seven. He comes out for 7-7. Seven, seven. You can play this on turn three, it's insane. Turn three, seven, seven, but because you, if you ramped well, on turn three, you might even have a little bit extra spare spare mana, um, you can you can drop a, a overkill on it as well. So it's got overrun as well. It, it, it's super strong, okay? Uh, whereas Analyst is, we have quite a few spell, spells in the deck, um, and you can, uh, this basically, every time you play a spell, it lets you look at the top four cards from your deck and choose which one you're drawing next. It can be very good mid-game because it allows you to set up for your end game with your big units down here. Now, the only other card that pops, some people will be like, why is this in the deck? Rewind Hex. Ret return an enchantment to the top of its owner's deck. If occupied, return that minion to its owner's hand. This works well two ways. One, at the moment, there's quite a lot of red and blue around. And uh, there's quite a lot of ocean, no, sorry, giant steps. Giant Steps gives a minion plus three, plus three. They get that out with Rush Minions. It's insane. There are quite a few enchantments that can do quite a lot. This is a great card, okay? It bumps out. It just it, it, it returns enchantments to the top of the deck. So we know they're going to draw back into enchantment next turn. If they're top decking, that's pretty bad for them. They've got to draw. They're not going to get a minion to put on that enchantment. They're drawing that enchantment back again. And it puts the minion back in their hand as well. If they're running Reanimate, remember, Reanimate minions come out of Ephemeral, meaning that you it doesn't return to the hand. It kills it. So put... A reanimate minion on an enchantment which is rare but it can happen this this puts the enchantment to the top of the deck and it removes that minion there's a lot of reanimate and there is a lot of giant steps going around at the moment that's why this is in there just to take against that you can remove it if you find you're you're not finding any value of it if you know they're not playing enchantments early doors just just burn it it's an easy burn target okay um but that's the budget version that is the budget version uh let's jump into some gameplay of the budget version Okay, so as I said, with the budget, the budget version, we are only playing AI. Hopefully, people can understand that. I don't want to, I don't want to get myself absolutely smashed on ladder playing a, a deck that isn't optimized to play on, on gold ladder. Um, but anyway, so what we're doing here, we have these guys in the deck because we're running heavies as well, and we're running uh, avenging alphas. All these are canines, so they're cheap canine synergy. It's not a canine deck, but it's cheap canine synergy. If they all go out at the same time, then then it's great, okay? So you have Grinning Coblock in hand start. That's absolutely amazing. We have two Avenging Alphas. We don't need two Avenging Alphas. We have quite a few turn four plays already. We can play that. We're going to put Coblock over here, play him quite wide. We're not going to play him in the middle. Um, if they want to not. So basically, he can move, he can double, like he can, because he has Swift, he can skip one and then again if you want to keep him alive. Or we're just going to take the mana if we need. Now we're going to just organize our hand a little bit here. So we're just going to set up the fives here and then three over here. So we have turn three plays. Um, we're looking all right in the moment. So this guy here, we're not going to worry about killing this guy. So we're going to move across over here. We're going to swing to the face with Cobblock. We're not going to take the one mana yet. And we don't actually have a turn two play. We have two heavies, so we're going to burn a heavy. And we are just going to pass turn there. Simple as that. Simple as that. We don't need to do anything else. We could, what we could have done, if we'd be mana efficient, I misplayed. We burn the heavy first. We put infuse onto Cobblock, and then we hit to the face for two damage. That's what we should have done. I didn't do that, so um, that's my bad. So this guy here is a lurker. Every time they uh, he breaches, he he manages to draw a card. Okay, so it's kind of annoying. 
Uh, but we now are up to three mana. So what we can do is we can pull this guy across again. We can burn... We have two Gammeons. We don't need two Gammeons. So we're going to burn a Gammeon. Uh, this guy can go up but slightly higher again. So we're going to bring him across again rather than attacking. And we're going to drop this guy next to them. Now all of a sudden this is a 2-2. Two, two, uh, sorry, 2-1 and this guy here. Sets up basically, if one of this gets removed next turn, it's not the end of the world, but it also means it sets up on turn four. We can play this. It's a 6-6, six, six, but it gets to buff off our K9 minion as well. And then we're going to end turn there. I've never seen that card. <laughs> I've never seen it. So, Give minion wind in, that combat damage is do equal damage to a controller. Okay, so that I see when I do the combat show. That's an interesting card. I'm, I've honestly not really seen that before. Um, so this has one health now. So what we're going to do is... Oh, they've healed themselves. So we just damage it from here. Um, hmm. Because nothing died, we don't actually want to get an Avenging Alpha out. We're going to burn another Avenging Alpha. We do want to get this dead, like, killed off now. So we're going to... We're actually going to move this here. We're going to move this so it gets to 2-2. Two, two. And that has 4. And that means it can remove this. So now you can see now we've got 6 mana. Next turn we burn a card, we've got 7 mana. On turn 5 we can play 7 drop cards. Or we can play 2 big cards. Uh, which is pretty, pretty big. Um, we're on four, and we're going to play Gammion. We're going to drop Gammion over here. Uh, she has Agile, which, uh, and she's going to get the buff off this one here. And she has Divination, meaning we can start setting up our mid-game now. Or we can drop this next turn, uh, which is huge. They're going to only drop a five-mana a five mana card next turn. We're dropping a six-mana card next turn with change, because we managed to ramp with Cobblock. That's what I mean by Cobblock being fucking amazing, guys. So if they trade here, uh, then this activates this to a 6-6, six, six, which we're pretty fine with. Uh, it won't trade now, actually, but it still this activates. So you can see Art what Art change on it is now a 6-6, six, six, uh, which we're pretty happy with. Um, I don't know if we play it now. I mean, we have 7 mana, so it's too late. So if you get this in your hand now, it's too late. You burn the card. We don't need this card now, okay? So we have choices here. We have a clean board. So we could play this, but we don't need to really play this, okay? We can hold on to this for now, we could play this, but we're going to get this out for now, and we're going to play it quite wide, because it has Swift. We can start setting up, we want to try and find Overrun now, or Leshy Green. Leshy Green could be okay, we already have a, have a Leather Stray, so we don't need another Leather Stray. Uh, and if you don't know what Leather Stray does, guys, Leather Stray will allow us to shuffle a minion with four or less strength, that's attack power, back into their deck. So if they put something opposite here, that's got four attack, we can just bin it back off there, get the double breach on it. Or well, they're going to play Thunderclap, which is which is fine. It doesn't remove our board. It's um, They're using them in there. We've got a clean board to swipe at here. So uh, we can get some damage going here now. Leshy Green, we can get more value off Leshy Green, definitely. Um, we're going to burn Avenging Alpha. And then we're now going to get Heavy out over here. We've now blocked all the lanes. We have enough. To, we've got to infuse um, Wind Fury. Because Wind Fury has Frenzy. So it attacks twice to the face. We Divination. Uh, we want the overkill. In case to put a minion down here, we can get the um, we can get the overkill on it, and we can get the uh, non-blocked damage going to the face. And we're in a pretty good position here. Okay, so like I said, being able to play this ahead of curve like is is insane. If people don't know why the curve is. I should be able to play this now on turn six. So I should only be able to play this next turn. Okay, I didn't. I played it on turn five because Grinning Cobblock, uh, and that's a very very important play. Uh, so we have lethal now. We can we can divination first to do be, be professional you know um sky ranger is a hell of a good card and then we can swing to the face we can swing to the face we can swing to the face again and we can finish off heavy and that is a budget mono green deck your finish art being in wind fury um but yeah that is how mono green budget deck works and honestly i played this deck uh, in silver a little bit and it wasn't too bad like i was uh, if I wasn't winning by like turn six, seven, I was struggling because uh, we're in silver, like late silver leagues. 
people have big, big minions like Mythics to drop down on the board, and that, that's where I'm struggling against. But if you're playing this on bronze, I, I think you'd be absolutely fine. Like honestly, I think you'd be fine. Anyway, let's just jump across to the more optimized deck. Okay, so this is the more optimized list, the more expensive list. Now it's called Mono Green Test because I'm still tweaking it, still playing around with it. And I'm going to be completely honest, it isn't where I want it to be, okay? If I take off the cards I haven't got, you'll see down here, there's still some big green mythics I don't own, okay? Ones I really want to be putting in this deck. Um, I wouldn't mind putting Ikutursu in there. I'm, I'm not 100% convinced on them yet. One I definitely, definitely, definitely want to be putting in is Boneyard Abomination. I love this card. It's one of my favorite cards in the game. I just, I, I just don't have it at the moment. And I'm tempted, tempted to put in Hydra. I'm not... I'm not sold on it yet, but I'm tempted. I feel like this is a better card on paper than it actually is in the game. But anyway, let's not dwell on the cards I haven't got. Let's dwell what's on this deck. Now, this deck has been doing very well for me. It helped climb me to gold. It's what I climbed into gold rank with. Now, I'll go through the list first, and we'll go through the differences between um, the budget version and the optimized version. Three grinning cob blocks, such an important card, okay? Uh, two overkills, two rewind hex, two born again, three detained. Only three Gallo Boys this time. We dropped one uh, to make some of the bigger space for the bigger units later. Three Raid the Tombs. Now we are playing Analyst here as well as Leshy Green. Analyst is very important mid game here. Analyst combined with um, Gamion can really mean we can find our big units. We don't find the big units in this in this deck, as in if we can't find the units to play ahead of curve, then we're going to be behind. And what, as I said, what I mean by ahead of curve is if we can't drop a, a seven or eight cost. Um, um, or drop minion on turn six or turn seven, then we're then we're behind, and then we're starting to play into the into the likes of what the other decks have got. We the, the thing this deck thrives off is playing ahead of curve, and that's what you have to be. And then the Alc the analyst and Gamion help us find the card to play ahead of curve. Uh, Bella Bella Witch Queen is seriously good. I get onto her in a minute. Um, two dead astray. You could add another one in these, and if you wanted, but remember it is only four attack. So by late game, there's not many minions that are going to be blocking you. Um, there's a few, obviously, but yeah, it's your choice. Two Leshy Green, two Sky Rangers. Discard, I didn't go over it last time probably. Discard is so good, and I'll go over why it is in a minute. Uh, only two Avenging Alphas now, not three. And, we don't, and we've cut the rest of the Canine Synergy. It's the only Canine... Oh, sorry, actually, other than Heavy, we do run Heavy, which is Canine as well. But we don't run the um, point, Pointman anymore in this deck. Three Gamion, because we really want to find those mid, those mid units. Uh, two Ravenous She, two Bulk of Heavy. Now we run Murmur. Murmur is so good. Murmur allows you to take control of an enemy minion in an opposite unoccupied lane. There's opposite an unoccupied lane. So you can move a minion out the way and then they drop a Sapo, you just steal the Sapo. Thank you very much. That's my Sapo now. Um, it's insane. There's no limit on, on the cost of the cards you can steal. As long as you have three gems, which you're going to have by that time, okay? Uh, and you can actually get this out on turn five. Uh, I'll go on to that in a minute. And then two Wind Furies, and then only one Beast. Now, the cards I would be running if I could, is I you could potentially run two Beasts. There's absolutely nothing wrong with running two Beasts, okay? I tried running two Beasts. I found that I was often just burning them more beforehand. Um, again, Wind Fury could have had more, but it's, the reason I'm running these these two Wind Furies for now, I'd probably drop, um, I realistically would drop either a Ravenous Sheet uh, and a Heavy uh, and a Wind Fury. To put in the likes of um, Short Scout, Short Stag, and uh, and Boneyard Abomination, if I or when I can get those cards. But anyway, we, we look at what we've got here. So, very important cards. Bella, Bella is insane. Okay, Bella is effectively if you can new to the game, she's a, a planeswalker from from Magic. She comes out with three charges on her. She's a lurker. So you play her next to another unit. They have to attack the other unit first. Um, you can for two. You can all spells cost one less mana to cast until the end of your turn. This is so good. Okay, this means that all of a sudden, Murmur only costs five mana. This means that all of a sudden, late game Overkill doesn't cost me any mana. Just costs me a gem. Okay, Detained all of a sudden, the one that takes two attack whips on, and then allows me to bump a minion back to the hand or destroy an, ephemer an ephemeral minion. They cost two to get both of them out, not four to get both of them out. Okay can be a very, very strong card. You can then spend one to stun a minion until its end of its next turn. So they drop a big guy down. I'm like, oh God, okay, I've got to finish your next turn, but I can't deal with this. Just stun it with Bella. It can't do anything. It can't It can't move, it can't attack, it can't do anything. It's stunned. And you can keep stunning it, okay? 
And then if you can get this big one off, I've got it off a couple of times. It's so stupid when you get it off. Um, you're branded, not as in the card is. If the card dies, you still get this ability. Whenever you play a card, you draw a card. It's insane, okay? You do lose one charge, though, whenever your opponent casts a spell. Do remember that, okay? Um, so you want to play her wide in the corners because you want her to live. You want her to live as long as possible. Make your spells cheap, but stun opponents. And if you can get that ability off, then kudos to you, my friends. Kudos to you. Now, reason Sky Ranger is so good, and reason I, I, and I forgot to mention her last time, this is another must-craft card for this deck. So you play her on turn three. She only costs one gem. Now you're playing mono green, so the chance or you're guaranteed to have three gems by turn three. So you play her. She has Lurker, which makes her quite nice. Um, you can instantly pop this ability because it is not free, it's not two mana, it's two gems. It doesn't cost any any mana from your mana pool. It costs two gems from the bar. So it costs the three mana and then the two gems left over to get rush and agile. If you're playing her on turn five and you and you feel like, wow, I, I can do four damage because I can put Infuse on her and pop these here and then smack her to the face. Like, it's so, so, so good. This card is seriously, seriously good. I get so much damage going with this, with, with Sky Ranger. I, and yeah, really good card in the deck. Um, I mean, you could drop the Avenging Alphas. I just feel like for a potential drop on turn three, Turn four minimum as a six six is such a strong card in this deck, but um, yeah, that's the deck, guys. Uh, you can see the mana curve is a little bit more stable here, so it's it's ones and two still. But when you can see it doesn't drop down, it kind of plateaus out and it stays pretty solid, just below where the uh, the one drops are um, late game as well. So that's the more optimized version, um, and I will let's jump into some gameplay and then we can um, and then we can talk about the deck at the end. Okay, so we are playing on ladder this time. We are playing ranked. <laughs> We're playing flake. We're playing. Watch Flake, guys. He's going to feature in this video. So, um, win or lose, I normally put these videos up. Um, we have Grid and Coblock, so we can see we can see exactly what we... Um, we can see how the deck's going to go. The deck should work fine. We have a very good open in hand. We have Grid and Coblock for, for turn one play. Uh, we have Born again to drop out turn two. We have Sky Ranger or Analyst for turn three. Less you green for when it goes far. Flake is playing Enchantments, which is not my favourite deck to play against. Um, but... I mean, hey-ho, what can, what, what can we do? What can we do, guys? Uh, so because we have the heavy, we're going to just drop the heavy for now. The heavy's a big boy. We don't want the heavy. We're going to drop this here. Um, if he's playing enchantments, he's probably playing mono, potentially mono blue, maybe blue yellow, because I know Flake likes a little bit of yellow. Um, and he shouldn't have an instant removal. There you go, blue yellow. He shouldn't have an instant removal for it. So there we go. Cobblock stays out. We actually get the second Cobblock as well. Now we're going to use that to ramp because... So we move this across here, we swing to the face, um, and we're actually going to, we need to think about our turn three play, we're going to burn Leshy Green. Now, because he's, the reason we're burning Leshy Green is he's playing enchantments, so he probably isn't going to be playing tons of minions or units, rather than he's going to be playing, um, playing enchantments. So Leshy Green's not going to get the full value, because he gets more value for minions being played, not enchantments being played. That's my thought process behind that burn. So this could be a bit of a grinding game. It could really be kind of dragged out, shall we say. Um, Flake likes control. He likes playing a little kind of maze trap for you to get past. This card is so good. So, 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 so good. So we're going to move this across. We're going to swing to the face. Um, we're then going to burn one of the Sky Rangers because we don't need both of them. We're going to get a Sky Ranger out over here. Now, do, don't try not to play Sky Ranger in the corners. Because you play them in the corners with Agile, they're limited to only attacking two lanes. With Agile here, they can attack all three lanes. See, when I hover, they, all three lanes got. We have two gems, so this is what I mean. We can activate the ability, and we can swing to the face straight away. More importantly, he's starting to kill the Singing Stone. If he starts putting enchantments out, this all of a sudden gets buffed 1-1. One, one. Singing Stone puts all minions that are occupying an enchantment at 1-1, one, one, which is not very nice for us. Oh, he's burnt Braggy. Magnus might be a play right now. If he's burning Braggy, he has he has the minion, he has the gems in hand and the mana to drop Magnus. Or he's gonna play Thunder Cut. That's actually good for us, because look, we now got five mana. We've got six mana going into turn fit. We're already ahead of the curve on him by two mana. Remember, Flake went first. So we already have the mana curve on him as well, okay? We got Sky Ranger back. We have Led Astray, which is really good to, to bin this off. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to 
we're going to burn we want to get this out to start putting pressure on it like now and having a leather strafe for next turn is super good so we're actually going to burn sky ranger because we're probably playing this next turn uh and we're going to throw this out now now the issue we have is he may end up playing um, another meso opposite. A meso will just stun it, and there's almost nothing we can do against that. He can move this across and trade if he wants to, um, which isn't going to be the end of the world for him. It won't kill us because he has three damage. We have four. Um, sorry, we we have five health. He has three damage. We will kill him though, so he he will trade. He will give up a free slot for us. Um, but if we can get the blast ability on this, we can kill it next turn. And we have Swift, and we have Led Astray to bump this back to hand. Um, so we can get the blast ability and remove this next turn. And we have card advantage over him. So we're actually in quite a nice position right now. We're probably going to play Led Astray followed by Raid the Tombs. We have two cards in hand. We have one more to go there. So we're going to prop Led Astray on this to bounce it back. There we go. Um, we're going to swing here once. I'm going to swing here again. Remove that. Um, we've got him down nicely there on damage. I think we're going to drop... Uh, analyst now we can start setting up next turn we can get the divination now it's four divination what do we want next turn rather she or probably going to go with the heavy because it's a little bit more the fence no nah, yeah, we're going to go with the ravenous she taking two damage first is going to be pretty pretty big we can burn a card we're going to actually we're going to actually burn born again this isn't the best thing to do we can't burn less green basically we're now both at two cards in hand. They're going to draw another card now. So they're at three cards in hand. This will put us a card advantage, which is really big. Really big for us. This has Swift so it can move. Um, and maybe we, maybe we can draw into something like the Tain. We can bump something back to his hand. This can get 10 damage off next turn, potentially. Um, so he's playing Serpent Trap, which is fine. Because we this has Swift, so we can move to the side. Um, he's going to get a Mutation on it. Okay, so we're going to start off with uh, Raid the Tombs. Purely because we want... Oh, we could actually... Okay, we may have misplayed there. We should have Divination first and then played Raid the Tombs because we could have chose what we, we drew. And we actually wanted this uh, to get the overrun on this card here. Um, yeah, so what we're going to drop now is we're going to burn this and we're going to put pressure on now by dropping a second one of these. Uh, we're going to swing this to the face... We're going to swing this here and swing this again. And enter. So we have two of these out. They both have Swift. He has two cards in hand. So he's effectively almost top decking. Ah, there we go. And we win. We get the win. Um, yeah. So uh, that was good. You can see exactly what I mean there. We, could, we were able to play one of these on turn five. And remember, Flake opened the, the game. Flake went first, so we had, um, we were already ahead of curve, and ahead of play. So we had the, the big advantage here. This was right, able to get rid of Meso. It instantly put us on the front foot, and that is why Mono Green is my my favourite deck at the moment. It's such a good, versatile deck, um, and I really, really, really enjoy it. But anyway. Hope you like the new format of the video, the budget version and the more expensive version. Apologies if you sat through all of it um, and, and you were like, I just wanted to know the more optimised version. Any changes you guys recommend or you're going to make, let me know in the comments below. I'm very open to, to, to feedback. Um, but yeah, now the Mythgard Hub is coming very soon, guys. Mythgard Hub, if you don't know, is very much like Gwent Up if you come from the Gwent community like I did. But it's, it's, it's a website where you can upload um, your decks and people can steal your, not steal your decks, they can borrow your decks and use your decks. Now it's not live yet. When it is live, these decks will be on there and the link will go in the description. But for now, the uh, Discord in the description below is where I post both decks. I put both decks in there, the budget deck and the more optimized deck if you want to import them into the game after you watch this video. But anyway guys, thank you so much for stopping by. It's been an absolute pleasure. I love, I love this game and I'm loving making content for this game. Um, have fun, have a great day, morning, evening, whatever it is where you are. But like, well, one last quick thing, if you are a new player, make sure you check out Team Rank Stars. I know I'm biased, take some part of Team Rank Star, the little logo you can see in the uh, in, on, above my face over here. Can you see it? There we go. Um, they have the, the, the best, literally the best beginners content. They have a whole article, it's a tome, it's not an article, it's a freaking tome, this thing, of um, 
tips for new players, breaking the game down, breaking down lane mechanics, breaking down resource management, all that kind of stuff. But definitely check that out. Link is in the description stat as well. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for checking the video out. And until next time, have a great day, morning, evening, whatever, whatever it is where you guys are. And any feedback, let me know in the comments below. And until then, goodbye, guys.